All right, so here is our problem. We are given the following vectors in unit vector notation. Vector a is 4i minus 2j. Vector b is negative 3i plus 5j. And vector e is equivalent to 2 times vector a plus 3 times vector b. So you see, vector e is actually what we call a linear combination of the other two vectors. Linear combination is a fancy word that means you multiply those other two vectors by some numbers and you add the results together. It's a general term that we use all, all throughout all upper level maths, even into quantum mechanics, physics, and other things. Linear combination just means take the original uh, things you have, multiply by some, some numbers, and add the results together. So two, uh, two times vector a plus three times vector b. Now we have to do three things with this. Uh, we're going to write vector E, this new linear combination vector, in component form. That just means I, J, K form, uh, unit vector notation. And part B, we're going to draw all three of these vectors on a single coordinate system, A, B, and E, on the same coordinate axis. And part C, we're going to determine the magnitude and the direction for vector E. So let's take it one step at a time. We're going to write down first what we are given. We are told that vector A... Uh, is equal to 4 times vector i minus 2 times vector j. And then vector b is uh, equal to negative 3 times vector i plus 5 times vector j. Now before we do anything else, let me just double check I have everything written down correctly. So you can see that vector a is in the xy plane because this is an x component and this is the y component and there is no z component. And vector b is also in the xy plane. So, uh, but just consider that in general, these vectors can have uh, three components, x, y, and z. And when you get to higher level things like relativity theory and quantum mechanics, you can have uh, other components of the vector also, time components. So you have the fourth dimension, right? The time dimension. But let's just drop all that stuff from now and just consider these existing in the xy plane, the flat plane here. No z components. Now, what we have defined in the problem statement is that we have a new vector e. And this vector e is 2 times whatever vector a is, and we're going to add that to 3 times vector b. Now, even though a and b are vectors, they're different mathematical constructs than what we've dealt with before, you can think about this as sort of like a regular algebraic expression. Uh, in other words, if, if uh, a and b were just variables, x and y, uh, but you substituted in what x and y were equal to, then what you would do, you would follow orbit order of operations. Multiplication, the multiplications here would come first before the addition. So that's the way you have to handle it. Now let's go ahead and write it all out and see how we uh, actually tackle it. So vector e is 2 times vector a, which is given right here, 4 times vector i minus 2 times vector j, plus 3 times vector b, which is negative 3 times vector i plus 5 times vector, uh, I keep saying vector j, I mean unit vector i, unit vector j there. Now, when we actually pull off the multiplication, we use the regular rules of algebra. This 2 has to be distributed in. So 2 times 4, we multiply the numbers, we get 8 in the i direction. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 in the j direction. And the parentheses can be disregarded now because you've done the distribution. And then over here, negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and the unit vector there is again uh, multiplied as well. So it's negative 9i uh, here. And then over here, 3 times 5 is 15, so you have positive 15 uh, j. So you see, we've done the multiplications first, and we have arrived at this step. And now we combine like terms, but the like terms here are the unit vectors, which are the same. So here we have i unit vectors. We have 8 minus 9, which means we have negative 1 in the i direction. And these are like terms, negative 4 and 15. When we add those, we get positive 11 in the j direction. Now, usually, uh, when we have... a uh, the number one is a coefficient, just like in algebra, we don't always write it. So you can leave it like this, but more commonly you would see it written as negative i plus 11j. And this is understood to be negative one in the i direction plus 11 in the j direction. So the first part uh, is write the uh, vector e in component form. This is what we want when we say something is in component form. We have uh, negative 1 is the x component because that's what's sitting in front of i hat, and 11 is the, uh, is, the, um, y, is the y component of this vector because it's sitting in front of j. So this is, you could call this unit vector notation, you could call this component form. If I wanted to, and we will do it later in the problem, we could convert this to a magnitude and an angle. We're going to save that for later.
All right, part B says draw vector A, B, and E on the same coordinate axis. So let's go ahead and do that. I think we can, let's see, I think we can just go ahead and do it on this board so that we don't have to go all over the place here. So let's go ahead and draw an X, Y axis down here. Your sketches don't have to be perfect. They don't even have to be close to perfect. You're just trying to extract whatever knowledge we can out of this. All right, so let's take a look at vector. Uh, looks like the largest number I have here is 11. All of these numbers are less than 11. So just to make it easy, I'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here's 10. One more tick mark is 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whoops, that's a little too close. Sorry about that. They don't have to be perfect. Eh. We'll do it like this. Here's 10. There is 11. And then we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 and negative 11. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And right here we said was 10. Now let's just double check because, you know, let's take, we don't want to make mistakes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Of course, I meant negative 10 here, negative 10 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, now we have everything in place to graph vector A. Vector A is 4i minus 2j. 4i means 1, 2, 3, 4 in the x direction, negative 2 in the y direction, which means you're pointed down here, which means vector A is something like this. All right, so this is going to be vector A. So that's uh, positive 4 in the x direction, negative 2 in the y direction. And it looks like I'm a little bit low, but you get the idea. All right, vector B, negative 3i means we go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Uh, in fact, let me just write these down again. So we'll write it as 4i uh, minus 2j. That way we can not have to go back and forth. Then we have uh, for B, negative 1, 2, 3, and then positive 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 means we're right here. So negative 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pretty close, not exact, but you get the idea. It's good enough for what we're trying to do here. Uh, this one is going to be vector B, which was negative 3 in the I direction, plus 5 in the J direction, right? So those are the two vectors. Of course, if we wanted to add these vectors together, we could easily do it. I mean, we had, we didn't do it in this problem, but the way you would do it is you'd grab one of the vectors, move it over so the tail is at the head of the other one, and then you would have this one, which would extend up here, and then you would add them, drawing the tail to the head, right? But we're not doing that. We actually are taking the, the first vector and we're multiplying it by two. And then we're taking the second vector and we're multiplying it by three. And then we take those stretched out vectors and adding them together. So really to, to do this, you're going to take this vector and multiply it by two, which makes it twice as long. And then vector B will be multiplied by three, which makes it like this, three times longer. And then you add them, which means you grab those, put them head to tail, which would be down here. And so the result should be somewhere up here. And the answer that we get is maybe I did my my little, let, let's put let's put it on the board and we'll see how, how it went wrong. It looks like I, I got a little carried away here. Negative one for the final, negative one. Let me actually do that one in red. Negative one, positive 11. So negative one for X, here's 10, here's 11, which means it's gonna be something right around here. There's no way I'm gonna be able to draw a perfect vector going down here. It's basically impossible. I'm not gonna be able to even, I'm not even gonna erase it, but you get the idea. It goes, goes there like that. And then this one is E vector, which is negative i plus 11j. Now let's do this a little bit uh, more slowly and see if this makes sense. If I take a and double it, that means a is going to end about here. If I take b and triple it, then uh, because it's three times b, that's going to be one, here's going to be two, here's going to be three. So vector b is going to be really, really long. And to add it, I'm going to have to put the tail over here, which is going to stretch it right here. That's how, that's how it works out. This goes three long, grab it, move it way down here so it's going to stretch to here, and then you connect tail to head. That's the resultant vector. All right. So what you're mathematically doing is you're stretching each of the vectors out by two and by threefold, and then you're adding the results together. But individually, all the steps are already what we in, what we know. We first stretch the vectors out and we add them as usual. We can see that we uh, should arrive graphically at more or less what we drew on the board, at least close enough to pass the smell test. Okay. 
Next, what we want to do is we want to, for part C, find the magnitude and the angle of vector E. So let's write vector E down over here. Vector E is negative I, this is the resultant vector from adding them together, plus 11J. All right, so what we say is magnitude of E uh, is equal to the square root of what's in front of here, negative one. So you have negative one squared plus 11 squared. Right, negative one squared is positive one. 11 squared is 121. So what do we have? 122. Let me just double check, make sure I did that right. Yep. And then when we uh, take the square root of that, we get the magnitude of E, which works out to be 11.0453. For all practical purposes, we could just call that a magnitude of 11. So we'll call the magnitude of this guy 11. I'll put a little squiggly here. Even though it's not exact, it's rounded to 11. And how do we figure out the, uh, the angle? The angle is, the in is always the same thing. It's the inverse tangent of y divided by x. The y component is 11 and the x component is negative 1. So what you're doing is you're taking the inverse tangent of negative 11 when you divide this out. So when you figure this out, what you get when you put negative 11 in your calculator and take the negative or, uh, the inverse tangent of it, what you get is negative 84.8. This is rounded, negative 84.8. So you say, well, I'm done, but don't forget, every single time you get an angle back from that calculator, inverse tangent, inverse sine, whatever, check the angle, right? So you always have to do that. So let's draw a little sketch. We know that our, uh, our we've already done this, but basically that the x component is negative one and the y component is 11. So we know that this vector is up here. It's in quadrant two. But this angle is actually a negative 84 degrees. So these are positive angles. These are negative angles. So what the calculator returned to us was actually the vector that's pointed down here, right, by negative 84.8 degrees because positive angles, negative angles. This would be negative 90, so this is negative 84 degrees. So the calculator gave us kind of the wrong answer because we know that our our vector's actually in quadrant two. It's exactly 180 degrees away. So what do we do is we take and we say that the actual angle is negative 84.8, and we add 180 degrees to it so that we get to the angle in quadrant two there. And so what do we get? When we take negative 84.8 and we add 180 degrees, we get 95.2 degrees from positive x axis. This is the angle. So typically we want to measure angles from the positive x axis. And this is 90 degrees. This is a little bit past that. So this makes sense. This is in the correct quadrant. Now, once again, I'll just talk for a second. Why did the calculator give us the wrong answer? Why? Well, it's because that when we uh, did our calculation, we took the y divided by the x component. That's 11 divided by negative 1, right? And so what we get is an inverse tangent of a negative 11. But the calculator is going to give us the smallest angle possible to give us that you know, the inverse tangent of that, the smallest angle that'll, that'll uh, happen, that will make that happen. And so it gives me a negative 84 degrees, because guess what? Over here, for the, for the vector we actually had, we had a, an x component of negative 1 and a y component of positive 11, but the calculator doesn't know that I, I could be talking about this angle, which will be a positive value of x of 1 and at a y value of negative 11. So you have two kind of like parallel universes of vectors here, right? And in both cases, when you take the y divided by the x component, you're going to get negative 11. Over here, x is 1, y is negative 11. When you divide those numbers, you get an inverse tangent of negative 11. Over here, when x is negative 1 and y is 11, it's the same thing. So it's just the negative sign being down here or up here. And in either case, you're taking the inverse tangent of negative 11, and it's just going to give me the smallest number. And when I mean the smallest number, I mean it, the number closest to 0. So even though it's negative uh, 84, it's just the closest angle to, to the x-axis there. 95 degrees away is absolute value-wise a little bit farther. So the calculator doesn't know if I'm talking about a vector in quadrant 4 or quadrant 1. Both of them, when you divide the, the y divided by the x component, give us negative numbers in those quadrants. So what you have to do is take the value the calculator gives you back, draw the vector of where it actually is, and then sometimes you may have to add 180 degrees, which is what we did. And so we get an angle of 95.2 degrees. So this is a good little problem because it helps us visualize that we can multiply vectors by numbers. And then once we get the answers, we can add the results, which is a skill that we have learned in the previous lesson. So hopefully by now, the, the uh, 
hopefully the question marks are flying because we learn how to add vectors, right? Now we've learned how to multiply vectors by a number, which is what we call by a scalar. And then in this problem, we combine the two operations where you can multiply vectors by numbers and then add the results. So now I hope you can see that you can have entire expressions in terms of vectors, very complex expressions um, that are not simply adding or multiplying. You can combine them together to more complex situations which arise in nature when we solve real problems. So I'd like you to solve these. Make sure you understand multiplying a vector by a scalar and then follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to learn how to take a vector instead of multi multiplying it by a number, a scalar, we're going to take a vector and learn how to multiply it by another vector. So follow me on to the next lesson and we'll conquer that topic. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.